I've received my latest order from Craft Time Clockery and everything is there as per usual and in this order is a Vienna regulator dial. Well actually two of them. Now the reason I ordered one of these dials well actually two of them is because the church that we attend just recently went through a big renovation and they completely remodeled their consistory room and their consistory room has a blank wall that apparently needs a clock. Now one of the council members was over the other day and uh, we were talking about this clock and I went on Craft Time Clockery's website and he actually chose this dial. So now it's up to me to make a case that's going to be befitting of such a stately dial. So I went on the internet and I typed in Vienna regulator dial and of course a lot of stuff came up but also it showed a lot of Vienna regulator dial type clocks and boy I can't compete with those things. Now I'm used to making plain simple cases and these were beautiful handcrafted cases that were on the internet so I'm just gonna have to hope that the consistory members do not go on the internet to see what this clock is actually supposed to look like because what I'm gonna make is not gonna be anything like that. I'm not sure which style of hands I'm going to be using here. I guess I'll know when I'm done. Uh, I'll probably use this movement and the pendulum you see here. I don't know if you happen to see my YouTube video called The Kitchen Knife, but I had used some scrap oak to make the sheath for that knife, and I still have some of that left. Now, as you can see, this oak is in really bad shape. It's got little holes here and there, but I think I'm going to be able to get enough out of it to do the basil for going around the dial and some of the oak here is a little bit uh, bowed and I'm going to try and flatten one side on each piece and that way it'll pass through the thickness planer and I'll be able to get everything down to the same width and thickness. Now before I actually start building this clock case I have to know the exact diameter that the dial is going to be and my plan is that I want to have an oak ring around the outside of the dial sort of like an oak basil. My plan is to cut as many segments as I can out of these pieces and then select the 12 best. This should be just about the right size to make that oak ring. I'm using Tight Bond 3 glue here and I'm probably going to have to wait about a day or so before I can actually start working with this piece. And like I've said before, better too much glue than not enough. The glue is all dry now and now I've got to figure out how I'm going to fasten this onto the lathe. And the face plate that I've got is a little bit too small uh, so I've got to make something to go in between this dial and the face plate. These holes that I'm drilling won't be seen. And here we go again with this is easier to show you than to try and tell you. So, a picture is worth a thousand words. With this setup, I'm going to make the outside diameter perfectly round. One of the guys that attends that church is a retired professional custom furniture builder. And he's been uh, turning like this since he was 15 apparently. And I've seen some of the stuff that he's done that's been uh, featured in woodworking magazines, national woodworking magazines. Beautiful stuff. Now because I've got all those screws in there, it's impossible for me to take down the face of the dial ring. This large jaw that I have mounted in the chuck will allow me to take down the face, but as you can see, it wouldn't let me take down the outside diameter.
This metal dial is slightly concaved and to make it fit flush against the uh, flat face I have to concave the face as well. Now you can see when I push on the center of the dial the outside of the metal ring is flush with the oak ring. Now I could use a movement that has a short shaft and I could fasten it directly to the metal dial but I want something a little bit more substantial here. So I have a couple of little quarter inch pieces of plywood left over from something else and I'm going to glue them together to make a half inch piece that should be just about right. I'm using my headless pinner here not to hold the pieces together but to keep them aligned when I clamp them. That epoxy glue that I'm using is kind of slithery. Those little pins that I just injected into that plywood, they were only 5 eighths of an inch long. So they stuck out just a little bit and I can grab hold of them and easily remove them. Corners are going to be cut off anyway there. I find it a lot easier to sand up to the line rather than try and use the bandsaw. So that round piece of plywood that I just made, it has to recess into that oak ring. So here I'm just rabbiting out so it can do that. And if I make it a little bit bigger, it should work. Only about a half an inch or so of the outside diameter of this ring is going to be visible and it's much easier to sand on the lathe. So I'm going to put it back on the faceplate. I started out at 150 grit sandpaper but I actually worked my way up to 1000 grit and this thing is as smooth as glass. I'm using 5 minute epoxy here to permanently fasten the plywood disc into the ring. Well that kind of wraps it up for the dial with its oak ring. And now I know what the minimum inside dimensions of the case can be. And you're probably wondering why did I go to all this work to make an oak ring. Well you'll see later on why. And I just know you're going to be watching for the consistory room clock part 2.